Hi everyone, this is Sinatra from the Reserve Team and welcome to the first episode of our protocol revamp flash course. In this first episode, I'm going to walk you through the R token platform, what it is and why we developed it. First of all, what we do at Reserve is we build tools for people to combat the effects of high inflation or hyperinflation. Why do we do that? Uh, well, if you look at uh, the world today, there's always some countries experiencing high inflation, um, even hyperinflation in some cases, which obviously has a lot of uh, damaging effects on people using uh, the currency of that country. So what we do as a solution, especially in the short term, is we allow people to escape their weak currency, like the Venezuelan Bolivar or, or the Argentine Peso at this moment or whatever, and we allow them to escape through, uh, um, through our reserve app to a strong currency, which is currently a US dollar pegged stablecoin. And so people can on-ramp off or off-ramp in both directions whenever they want. And this basically allows them to, again, escape from their weak currency and save and spend their money at a stable, strong currency. Now, if you look at the future, then you might see a situation where the US dollar that currency that we're relying on so much to be strong becomes weaker and weaker. And if something like that happens, the problem is that we don't have a solution uh, uh, in that case. Like if the US dollar becomes the weak currency, we have a platform where we don't actually have a strong currency to escape to. And that is the reason why we developed the R-Token platform. The R-Token platform is basically a way to find this strong currency. And I'm going to explain what that means in a second. First of all, the R token platform is a platform that allows anyone to easily create their own stable currency. Uh, why do we do that or why did we develop that platform? Uh, because while we have a pretty good idea of where we want to go with that currency or how that currency should look, we don't want this uh, journey to find out that currency. We don't want it to be centralized. We think that Permissionless competition is welcome in this case. And the reality is, while we have a pretty good idea of what we think that currency might look like, we don't have a, an exact idea of the ideal basket or how that currency should be governed. And so basically we're gonna start creating some currencies, but if at one point uh, an individual or a company doesn't agree with our, with our point or with our ideas and thinks they can create a better currency, they can do that on the platform. And then when their currency has more adoption or people like it more, uh, then that might become the uh, dominant uh, stable currency. So to put that visually, this is how the platform is going to launch. We are going to launch with two stable currencies. We have RSV, as you know it now, which is backed by USDC, PAX dollars and true USD and is governed by reserve. And so it's going to uh, be governed centrally in the same way that, that it is right now. We are also going to launch a second stable coin and I'm calling it RSX right now because we, we haven't defined the, the real name yet uh, that will change soon. But basically we're going to create a second stable coin which will be backed by uh, DeFi yield bearer tokens, which are tokens from uh, protocols like Aave, Compound, or Curve that will basically generate some yield for the holder. And this second currency will be governed by DAO. And, and the way we're going to to market these two stablecoins is RSV is going to be the checkings account in the reserve app and RSX is going to be the savings account in the reserve app because it generates some yield. Now at a certain point, we are going to evolve as a company and we're going to want to create a better currency because keep in mind that these two initial currencies are still, uh, still have a relation to the US dollar. So we don't have a long-term solution in case the US dollar would lose uh, its value. So at one point we might come along and we might create a third token on the R token platform. And that third, third token might be backed by multiple currencies like the Euro or GPD, um, uh, GPB I mean, or maybe some gold or some other uh, commodities and even equities or whatever. So we might create a, a third token, which is, can also be governed by a DAO. But then if someone uh, comes along and says, well, that's a pretty good idea, the third token, but I think I can do it better. They can basically copy our uh, setup. They can copy that token basket, uh, but they can say, well, I like the basket, but I think uh, we can create a better currency if it's not governed by a DAO. 
but by company X, for example. And that can be whatever. That can be a group of experts or a certain company or whatever, um, or it could be a different type of DAO, whatever. Those are basically the things that people will be able to configure and will be able to do on the Artoko platform. And so if we go through enough of these iterations of people discovering that um, uh, ways to that ideal, uh, ideal currency, we believe that ultimately we'll get to that currency. And then when the US dollar or the euro or the Japanese yen start losing a significant amount of value, then we have a currency to escape to uh, through the reserve app or any other app for that matter. We are going to be releasing the user interface of the Artoko platform or the reserve app pretty soon so that you know exactly what it looks like, how you can actually create a new token and that kind of stuff. Uh, but here's already some parameters to give you an idea of things you'll be able to change on each Artoko. So you'll be able to change, obviously, the basket of collateral assets. That's what we've been talking about. But also the governance. Should it be managed centrally through a multisig, a DAO or something else? You'll be able to define the staking lockup delays. How much time should there be as a lockup for RSR before it can be unstaked? And by the way, we're going to talk about the exact role of RSR pretty soon in one of the next episodes. You can also define what a default looks like. When should RSR insurance actually be used to cover some issues with collateral tokens? And as I said, there will be many more of these uh, parameters, but I hope this gives you uh, an idea. So this was the first episode of our protocol revamp flash course. I hope it was val valuable to you. If you have any questions, you can reach us on these so social media platforms or you can always send me a DM. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the exact role that RSR plays as insurance for the R tokens. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.